And so I decided to go. I decided to go and live in the airports. And just as Rob said a minute ago, I set out and I went from Columbus to Boston, Boston to Miami, Miami to Chicago, Chicago to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Seattle, Seattle to San Diego, seven cities in seven days without stepping foot outside of the airport to just be there to observe the way that we move in and out of our lives in today's world and to think about maybe what is it about that metaphor that can teach us something about our lives today. And if we truly want to change the world, what would it mean to bring a different spirit to the airport, to the obstacles, cancellations, and delays literally in the airport, and then let that spill over into the rest of our lives? We all know the scene. You get off of your arriving airpo uh, uh, airplane, you hit the bottleneck at the escalator, you come spilling out into the baggage claim area, and as soon as that annoying buzzer goes off, we all know that, that, uh, that for some reason we haven't come up with a better sound. As soon as it goes off, everybody instinctively goes running up to the baggage claim. And we stand there with our legs pressed against the cold metal conveyor belt, and we form this human wall so that nobody can actually see the bags. <laughs> and then we start jockeying back and forth, trying to claim our space, trying to claim the bag that is ours. And if you're one of the few people who didn't get out of the gates quick enough and you're stuck behind the human wall of entitlement, you are bobbing and weaving back and forth, standing up on your toes, trying to look through a crack just to see your bag. And we all know that the unfortunate scene then of somebody who is having trouble grabbing their bag and pulling it off that passing conveyor belt, and yet very few people stop to help. As I witnessed this in seven different cities, and I stood back from the baggage claim in my own life, I started to reflect on what does that mean about our lives? What does that mean about our world today? And maybe, maybe there's something in the practice of that where we all are in need of a step back from the baggage claim. Because maybe stepping back from the baggage claim is really about gaining perspective. Maybe taking a step back from the baggage claim is about including other people. Maybe stepping back from the baggage claim is about creating more space so that something more significant in our lives can emerge. What does it reveal about us if we're the person that's hovering too close to the conveyor belt and maybe too worried about what we need, maybe at that moment in our lives, either literally in the airport or in some other area of our lives, maybe it's time for us to step back from the baggage claim. In fact, I think our country right now is in the middle of a step back from the baggage claim. With the economy, with a war, Every single one of us in our personal lives, in our businesses, we are being challenged right now to step back from the baggage claim, to not hover so close to what we thought we knew, and to step back to let a different perspective arise, to maybe think about what does it mean to include the people around us, and hopefully create some space so that something greater something more significant in our lives can emerge. Maybe on the individual level, maybe on our country level, maybe for the world, we're in the midst of a step back from the baggage claim. Maybe it's time for us to rethink some things that we've always thought we knew. I wonder what that would look like in our individual lives, and also in our businesses and organizations and for this world. My final thought today uh, is that the purpose of the book is to invite all of us to travel gracefully. I watched this woman in the midst of this seven straight days in the airports, I watched this woman in Boston move through the security line checkpoints. I was sitting on just the gate side of this security line 
And I was watching one line in particular and just taking some notes and some observations of human behavior. And I watched this one woman, and I was captivated by her. She was probably in her early 30s, and she was one of the only people to be additionally searched. She was chosen, and they pulled her aside. And this TSA worker threw her bag up on the table and immediately unzipped it and started just rifling through her things. And this bag of nicely and neatly packed items in a matter of seconds was just this disheveled pile of clothes, her underwear out in front of everybody, rifling through it as person after person passed her in line. And the whole time I kept watching this woman, and she was asking this guy about his day. And she was laughing at his jokes. And she was laughing at herself and telling about her day and where she was headed. And meanwhile, this guy just keeps rifling through her stuff, and person after person passes her in line. When all of a sudden he's done with his check, he says thank you and just walks away, and this pile of items just lay there on this table. And this woman starts to just scoop it back into her bag. And so all of a sudden, about mid-scoop, she just picks up her bag. It's not even all packed together. And she starts running. And I thought to myself, oh, she's in a hurry. And sure enough, she came running out. And she came, started dashing down towards her gate. This, all these loose items over her shoulders, this big smile on her face, running in high heels down towards her gate. And for some reason, she looked at me and she picked me out and she said, this isn't the easiest thing to do in heels. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, but you're doing it well. <laughs> and she just flowed. And I kept watching her and I kept asking myself, why wasn't she complaining? Why wasn't she frustrated that she was late for her plane? Why wasn't she moaning about the fact that how unfair this was, that she was the only one that was chosen? Why wasn't she upset that her ni nice and neatly packed bag was now this pile of disheveled items? She was traveling gracefully. And I can't tell you anything about this woman. I can't tell you what her faith is. I can't tell you what her beliefs are. I can't tell you what she thinks the answers to the problems of the world are. But just by watching her, I can tell you everything about the vitality of her spirit. No matter what obstacles, cancellations, or delays were showing up along her path, she was traveling gracefully, and she was putting loving and grateful vibrations into motion in the world. This, uh, this isn't about a book, a nice book. And this certainly today isn't about just a nice speech. What this book hopefully is about is a call for all of us to put more loving and grateful vibrations into motion in the world. Whether it's the everyday things that you all do here as a part of being a Rotarian, the projects you support, the loving and grateful vibrations you try to put into motion, or just the way that you're going to choose to bump into everybody the rest of today from the minute you rise from your seats. And maybe the next time you go to the airport, you will see things from a slightly different angle of vision as you think about this book. And maybe you, too, will believe that we can change the world. And I'll meet you at the baggage claim.